Good morning. Hello. Welcome. I'm glad you're here. We are continuing our discussion of solving systems of equations. And the two things that we've explored so far is something we call the equal values method. Remember, if we have, for example, two equations written in slope-intercept form, we can take the expressions that y equal, since y equals itself, and set those equal to each other. And then more recently, we've investigated this idea of substitution, taking something that's a valid substitution from one of the two equations and plugging it into the other. And today, we're going to explore the possibility of solving things without substitution. But before we do that, let's take a look at solving a problem with substitution. Jeanette is trying to find the intersecting points of these two lines. And we could certainly rewrite them into y equals form and graph them on our calculators. Or heck, we could even plug those into Desmos. Probably they're in standard form. I think we could type them in in standard form. And we could find the location also. She's decided to use substitution to find the points of intersection. Her plan is to solve the first equation for y and then substitute that result into the second equation. So let's go ahead and solve this system using the techniques that she's outlined. So I think I have the same system here. I believe this is the same. And according to Jeanette's plan, we're going to begin by solving the top equation for y. So let's do that. If I want to solve this equation for y, I'm going to begin by subtracting 2x from each side. If I do that, this equation will become 3y, and that will equal now a negative 2x, because I subtracted that from the left and the right, and then minus 2. Next, I'm going to divide everything by 3. So that's going to give me that y is equal to negative 2 thirds x minus 2 thirds. Now, what I have at this point is I have an expression, negative 2 thirds x minus 2 thirds that is equal to y. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this expression for y in the second equation. It's going to go into this equation. So when I do that, I'm going to end up with the following. This equation is going to become 5x minus 3. And again, I'm just copying from the second equation here, 5x minus 3, and I'm going to multiply that by y. But substituting in for y is the expression negative 2 thirds x minus 2 thirds. And then if I complete up the equation, I see that that is equal to 16. So let's rewrite this second term here using the distributive property. I'm going to distribute this negative 3 to both the negative 2 thirds x and the negative 2 thirds. And when I do that, I'm going to get 5x. And that's going to become a positive because I'm going to have a negative 3 times negative 2, which is positive 6 over 3. So this will be positive 2x. And then negative 3 times negative 2 thirds will be a plus 2, and that equals 16. Therefore, um, 7x plus 2 is 16. 7x has to be 14, and it looks like my friend x is the number 2. Now that I've identified what x is, I need to select either one of my original equations above, or I could even use this equation uh, to figure out what y is. I think I'm going to take the top equation and just go ahead and write that 2 times x plus 3y equals negative 2. But taking the place of x will be the value of x that I found, which is 2. So 2 times 2 plus 3y equals negative 2. So 4 plus 3y is negative 2 
3y is negative, mm, what is that, negative 6. So it looks like y is equal to negative 2. So we found an ordered pair, right? We found both the x and the y. And I believe our solution, the point where these two lines will meet, is when x is 2 and y is negative 2. So I think I want to look at this visually before we go on. So I'm going to go ahead and grab Desmos and type 2x plus 3y is equal to negative 2. And I can see that the point 2, negative 2 is definitely on this line. The question is, is it on the other line as well? So let's look at the other line. The other line was 5x minus 3y is 16. So I'll type 5x minus 3y is the number 16. And I can see, yeah, absolutely. It looks like the point where these two meet is at x is 2, y is negative 2. So we clearly have, oh, look, there's the x-intercept, the y-intercept. And this is where the lines intersect. Intercept, intercept, intersect. They intersect at 2, negative 2. So we're definitely on the right track. And that's great because we just practiced solving a system of equations using substitution. And we're pretty sure that it works. Our solution works. What I'm going to do now is out outline an alternate solution that eliminates some of the messiness of the substitution method. Although it was kind of nice how um, this was not particularly messy because yes, we did get fractions in this expression and uh, these fractions looked a little intimidating but then because we ended up multiplying by this 3, the fractions went away. So it's possible that this could have looked worse than it did but I don't think it was particularly bad. But this elimination method that we're going to outline, um, I think we'll make this in some ways um, more straightforward. It's definitely a good problem to use the elimination method for. So let's just talk about it big picture. So I think that most of us would not have a problem with it. If, if I said, hey, 3x plus 2 is equal to the number 8. Okay. I think that you would believe me if I said, you know what, you're going to get an equi equivalent equation if you add 7 to both sides of this equation. We have equal things, and if I add these equal things, I'm going to get equal things. So the equation 3x plus 9 equals 13, 14, 15 equals 15 is the exact same equation, right? The thing is, is I just added a 7 to both sides and it doesn't change it. Kind of a good way to look at that is to um, observe some things in Desmos. In fact, let's just consider a totally different equation. Let's look at, um, I'll say 3x plus 7 equals 2y. Okay, interesting. Now, if I, like, for example, if I add two x's to both sides of this just to just to say I, I can add two x's to both sides this equation becomes 5x plus 7 will equal 2y and then plus 2x so there we go I added um, I added 2x to each side this was 3 it became 5 and I got a 2x here it's the exact same line you can see the purple line and the black line are exactly the same um, if I wanted to, I could take away 5 from both sides. So I could write 5x plus 2, if I'm subtracting 5, equals 2y plus 2x minus 5. And there it is. It's the same exact equation. So I want us to be really comfortable with this idea that if I have two things that are equal and I add the same thing to both sides, I still end up with things that are exactly equal equal. Meaning that the new item I get 
right, is the exact same object. It's the exact same line in this instance. And I haven't changed it at all. I've just modified its format. So again, adding the same thing to each side of an equation doesn't uh, change the, the solutions to the equations um, or the line itself. It just changes maybe the fact that it's got an extra 3 on both sides, or etc. So if I come back to our problem that we're looking at, if I have the 2x plus 3y equals negative 2, um, there is no reason in the world why I couldn't add 7, 8, 3, 12, anything to both sides. In fact, if I wanted to, I could add 16 to each side of this equation, right? If I added 16 to both sides of that equation, the right-hand side would become a positive 14. And the left-hand side would be a 2x plus 3y equal, uh, plus a 16. It would have a positive 16 as well. What I want to point out though is it turns out that if I'm adding 16 to both sides right if I'm adding 16 to both sides because 5x minus 3y is 16 there's no reason why I couldn't say yeah I'm gonna add 16 to both sides on the one side I'm gonna actually add 16 but on the other side I'm gonna add something that's equal to 16 namely I'm gonna add 5x minus 3y. So 5x minus 3y is equal to 16. So when I look at this, I can say, hey, I'm adding the same thing to both sides. When I do that, I'm going to get a new equivalent equation mm -hmm, that's going to have all the same solutions as my original equation. Now here's the magic. If I do this over on the right hand side, we already discussed the fact that I'm going to get the number 14. On the left hand side, when I do it, I'm going to get a 7x and that's all. And the reason why that's all is because, yeah, you can see it, I've got exactly a positive 3y and a negative 3y. And when I add those two elements together, they equal 0. So by adding quote unquote 16 to both sides, or certainly something that's equivalent to 16 to both sides, I end up getting the new equation 7x equals 14 therefore x has to be 2. Now yeah it was it was a, maybe a bit of a setup to explain why this happens and I want you to understand the why this is happening. It's nothing more than the fact that I'm adding the same thing to both sides but because of that in one step I figured out what x was. Well two steps right. I think this certainly looks less complicated than the time we did this with substitution. Of course, now that we know what x is, again, we can pick either one of the top two equations, uh, of the original equations, rather, either one of these, to figure out what y is. I'll use the second equation this time, and I'll write 5 times the value of x minus 3y equals uh, 16. Uh, this is a 10, so I'm going to take away 10 from both sides, so 3y equals 6. And if I divide both sides by negative 3, I get that y is negative 2. So there we are with the exact same ordered pair. The solution to this system is the value, where, the point rather, where x is 2 and y is negative 2. All right, so let's look at question 81 from the textbook. Um, this is question 81, and actually I... I would prefer right now that you go ahead and pause the video and maybe open up 81 in the ebook and try to do this problem on your own. Definitely this involves reading a situation, writing a system of equations, um, and then there's a couple of other questions here like why is this a good candidate for the elimination method and then solve it and check your solution. Make sure it works with the original problem. But Go ahead and pause and do that and uh, then unpause it if you want to check your work. Okay, so you're back. Welcome back. I hope you had a good time solving that one. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Pat was fishing uh, at a fishing competition at Lake Pisces. He caught some bass and he caught some trout. So he caught some. So I'm going to say that I'm going to write a let statement. I'm going to say it let p uh, equal the number of y p. Oh, he's at Lake Pisces. That's why that's stuck. I'm going to let T, 
rather equal the number of t r o u t using the variable t is a little problematic especially if you just do this for your t so be careful i try to make it with this hook so i'm making sure that i understand that this is the letter t and it's not plus um, and let b and i'll use lowercase b equal the number of trout or not trout this is bass not in the lake but the the number of trout and bass that he caught <laughs> the number of trout in the lake all right and it says that um each bass weighed three pounds and each trout weighed one pound okay and he caught a total of 30 pounds okay so there's an equation here that's based on the weight and it says that the bass weighed three pounds and the trout weighed one pound so I could say one times t right that's the weight from trout plus three times the number of bass he caught would be the weight of his fish from bass right so the weight because because if he caught like seven trout that's just seven pounds if he caught two bass that would be six so what we here see in this expression is the weight the total weight of fish from trout plus the total weight of fish from bass and that's the total weight of the fish that he caught which is 30 pounds so that's one equation the other equation it says he got five points in the competition for each bass but since trout are endangered in Lake Pisces, he lost a point for each trout. Uh-oh. Okay. And he got a total score of 42 points. So for a trout, you're losing a point. But for the bass, you're getting five points. So five points for each bass. And his total score was 42 points. So here we are. We've, we've defined our variables with a let statement and the question the part b says why is this a great candidate or why is this a good candidate for the elimination method and i think it's it's right here right it's because the fact that i've got a positive one t and a negative one t and those equa in, in the equation and if i add essentially 42 to both sides right or something equal to 42 to both sides those are going to cancel each other they're going to they equal zero when I combine them. So if I combine these, right, on the left-hand side, when I add the 42 to that side, I get 72. And on the right-hand side, when I add things that are equal to 42 to that top equation. So like, to me, I'm thinking with, I'm, I'm starting with the top equation, and to that, I'm adding something to both sides of it. I'm adding 42 to both sides of it, or something equivalent to 42. But when I do that for the uh, left-hand side, I end up getting 8b. And therefore, when we take the number 72 and divide both sides by 8, we're going to get the beautiful number. It's prime. It's a perfect... No, it's not prime. It's not prime. It's a perfect square, though. We get the beautiful number 9. So we know that he caught, he caught 9 bass. Okay, he caught nine bass. Um, so then, now that we know that he caught nine bass, we can calculate how many trout he caught. And I can use, again, either one of the equations. I'll go ahead and just use the top one. The top one was 1t, or just t, plus three times the number of bass, which was nine, equals 30. 3 times 9 is 27. So t plus 27 is 30. So it looks like the number of trout is 27, 28, 29, 30, 30. So uh, it says, so I would say that he caught... He caught nine bass and three trout. Now it does say make sure that you check this uh, and make sure it, it works with the original system and the situation. And, and I will. I'm just going to come back up here and look at my original thing. So if I have three trout, 
um, then certainly this is going to become 3 times um, 1, which is 3, right? And then over here I've got this one is going, I've got uh, 9 bass. 3 times 9 is 27. And 27 plus 3 is indeed 30. So this definitely satisfies the top equation. Let's take a look at the bottom equation. So this is going to become the number negative 3. And if I take 9 and I multiply it by 5, that's 45. And 45 um, minus, minus 3 is indeed 42. So I can see that it, it satisfies both the original equations in this problem. In question 82, uh, there is a there is a uh, a thing I want to point out in terms of solving systems using the elimination method, and it it I can point this out using the the situation that Annie's looking at. So this is the system that Annie's looking at, and she's like, mm, this is terrible, because literally if I was to combine those, right, I would get a new equation that would be part of the system but one of my variables is not going to be eliminated and that's not something that we want so to illustrate that I want to go to Desmos real quick so the whoops right here it is so I've got this system and I'll, let me graph both of them real quickly so I've got the 2x plus 7y is 13 and the 2x plus 3y is 5 if I just go ahead and add things both sides to both sides, right? Add essentially quote unquote five to each side of the left, the top equation. I end up getting that 4x plus 10y, 4x plus 10y will equal 18. Now, I want you to look at that. That was not, right? That's not equivalent to either one of our original equations, right? It's a totally different third equation. But I want to point out that, oh my gosh, it still hits the same solution point, right? Even though it's not the top equation or the second equation, right? It's not either one of those. It is giving me this third equation that still will share the same solution point as the original two. Our problem here is that when we added this 5 to both sides, 5 on this side and something equivalent to 5 on the other side, we didn't eliminate one of our variables, right? So that's the, one of the, the things that can happen. We can have a system like this where if we just add the quote unquote 5 to both sides, nothing gets eliminated. So one of the things that we can do, right, is we can say, you know what, let's do this. Let's take one of the equations, and it does not matter which one. I could use the top or the bottom, but let's multiply every single term in that equation by, in this case, negative 1. In fact, it will often be negative 1 if you're just trying to get the, the signs to be opposites. So if I do that, this top equation becomes, this, it stays the same, right? The top equation is 2x plus 7y is 13 and the bottom equation is now negative 2x minus 3y equals hmm that's interesting negative 5 so this will be extremely useful because now when i if you look at it what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be adding a negative 5 or something equivalent to negative 5 to both sides we end up getting this new equation that 8, right, 13 and negative 5 is 8, is equal to 4x. Mm -hmm. Because 2x and negative 2x is 0, and 7y and minus 3y, it's not x, Mr. Roberts, 7y and minus 3y is 4y. So now we can see that, oh, y therefore has to equal the number 2. And now that I know y is 2, I can plug it in and figure out what x is. And in fact, if I come back to my graph, did, was y really 2 in my solution? Oh, yeah, it absolutely is. I, I thought for some reason that was the x-axis. But you can see, yeah, this is definitely happening. There's some value of x. And then up here, y was 2. So uh, it looks like x is not going to be a whole number. It looks like x is a fraction. So let's let's go find x.
So again, I could use either one of the equations. I'll use this top one, and I'm going to figure out what x is. So I know that 2 times x plus 7 times the value of y is 13. That means that 2x plus 14 equals 13. Therefore, 2x is negative 1. And it looks like x is negative 1 half. So when x is negative 1 half, uh, well, no, I'm sorry, the point negative negative 1 half comma 2 is the solution to this system. Okay, so we'll finish up our class time together by having you do question 83. And it asks you to go through and solve these three systems of equations using the elimination method. And the important thing that I want to see is that you're using the elimination techniques and it's visible that that's what's happening. Um, I would pause the video now and after you've gone through and checked each one, you can come back and look at the answers. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the answers up on the screen for you. And here are our solutions. Well, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you for coming to class and working through and thinking about these problems with me today. I hope that you have a, a good three-day weekend. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday we're celebrating on Monday. It's a great day, and I hope you make the most of it. I'll see you back in class and online on Tuesday. Talk to you later.